Now here we have a problem that I was uh, working with a student on today. We were working on a bunch of problems, and a lot of them were a lot more complicated than this one, but this one emphasizes something that I want to show you. The problem looks fairly complicated when you look at it, but if we use a term, a technique called substitution, for example, let's say we take x squared plus 1, and we substitute x in for that. That would give us x squared minus 7x plus 10. Now we can see that this is easily factorable into x minus 2, x minus 5. And we did that because we looked at the factors of 10 that would add up to 7. And 1 times 10 wouldn't work because that would be 11. So 2 plus 5 works, so we're going to use 5. We use the negative sign because whenever we have a plus sign here, we always take this sign here, and both terms will have that. Both factors actually will have that. Now, now we substitute back in x squared minus, uh, excuse me, a squared plus 1 back in for our x. So it's a squared plus 1 minus 2 and times a squared plus 1 minus 5. Now, as you can see, if I simplify this, it simplifies to a squared minus 1, a squared minus 4. Now, I can see that each one of these can be further factored. a squared minus 1 is a difference of squares, which becomes a plus 1 a minus 1. X, a squared minus 4 is also a difference of squares, which becomes a plus 2, a minus 2. And now you can see I have completely factored this seemingly complicated problem here into a relatively simple answer here. Substitution can actually be used and is often used in calculus to simplify problems. If you're experienced, oftentimes I don't use substitution. I can just do it without it. But if you're just learning it, substitution is really helpful. And I advise using it whenever you can.